June 9, 1944. Allied troops in Normandy have moved inland. The work of the U.S. Navy and Coast Guard and the combined Allied Sea Forces has been done. Work not without a price in men and materiel. began many months earlier. In Chesapeake Bay and other sections of the American coast, untested sailors and soldiers learned the task of getting from ship to shore. But that time, the shore was a friendly one. Then, with part of their training finished, they left the United States. Late in the winter and all through the spring, the great convoys moved eastward across the Atlantic. Aboard all the transports, life was the same. The troops relaxed and waited for the voyage to end. the coasts of Great Britain that spring, the training went on. Navy and Coast Guard landing barges practiced landing operations day and night. <laughs> Meanwhile, the larger landing craft LSTs and LCIs carried on their maneuvers, learning to land at a given spot at a certain time. days of preparation, Allied planes, thousands of them, continued to soften enemy defenses and communications in daily raids. <laughs> Off the southern coast of England, Thousands of ships from all Allied nations are preparing for the invasion signal. Navy and Coast Guard crews make last minute preparations. When the K-rations come aboard, everyone knows that D-Day is drawing near. Somewhere in southern England, troops embark on LCVPs to be ferried to the waiting transports offshore.
the LCIs are loaded. The next time these men step ashore will be on an enemy beach. There's only a little time left to relax. And the bombing attacks of the Air Force are intensified. Now the raids are continuous. At ports of embarkation, the troops prepare themselves for their greatest battle. officer briefs his men, and all along the coast, sailors receive their final instructions. At last, the ships leave the coastal waters and move out into the channel. The slow LSTs loaded with heavy equipment, the transports loaded with men. Fast warships screen the mighty invasion fleet from enemy raiders. At 15.30, a Coast Guard flotilla of LCIs leaves, loaded with engineers, medical corpsmen, and infantry. D-Day approaches, and the ships are in their assigned positions. For some of them, like the Coast Guard manned transport chase, it is the fourth invasion in European waters. The only planes overhead are friendly. From the 83-foot Coast Guard rescue boats to the Navy's powerful battle wagons, the invasion fleet is moving towards France. And below decks, officers study the maps that mark the invasion beachheads on the coast of Normandy.
the landing barges are stopped by concrete obstacles built far out in the water by the enemy. Offshore, the larger landing craft approach the beachhead slowly. eyes the troops prepare to land. The beach is still empty and the crossfire of German guns still rakes the shore. <laughs> Out of enemy firing range, the LSTs wait to move in until the beaches are cleared. The arrival of motorized equipment marks the end of the first phase of the landing. The LCIs, their first loads of men now on the beaches, go out to the transports to ferry more troops inshore. Still waiting beyond gun range, the LSTs unload supplies on smaller LCTs. Heavier equipment is transferred to giant rhino ferries, flat-bottomed barges that will land it ashore. And reinforcements arrive, thousands of men. Defeated and disarmed, the first German soldiers captured in France wait until someone has time to evacuate them. Out in the channel, the rescue boats of the Coast Guard are looking for survivors and aiding damaged vessels. and the hospital ships are waiting for the wounded. From a damaged Coast Guard LCI, a wounded man is transferred to another ship. The life-saving blood plasma goes with him. Another Coast Guard manned LCI, badly crippled, could not reach the shore, and its wounded are removed. is firmly in allied hands now, and the vast extent of the operation is visible. Silent evidence of the fierce battle is apparent everywhere.
But in a few days, many of the damaged ships will be afloat again. Now more and more troops move inland to push the enemy back. And the LSTs land their cargoes on the beach. Barges built especially for the Normandy operations are left on the shore to be unloaded. During the daytime, there are only Allied planes in the air. But at night, German bombers harass the beachhead and drop mines offshore. Out of sunken block ships, artificial harbors have been built. Until a port is won from the enemy, these must handle all allied shipping. Bad weather came after the fighting on the beaches was over. The heavy storm left a trail of damaged ships. Once again, the landing barges moved out into the channel, this time loaded with German prisoners. In England, prisoners board a Coast Guard transport. Ships which have carried thousands of American soldiers overseas now return westward with a different cargo, with men who were beaten and captured in Normandy.